In the previous video, you were able to add a new attribute to the friend entity to, rep to represent the friend's name to save that information to core data to load it back up again and to display the information in your app using the friend's class. The name attribute was a string type, okay? So now your challenge is to add another attribute. Why not try adding another string attribute to hold your friend's address? Do you think you're up for the challenge? Remember that you will need to add the attribute to the data model and generate the core data class file again. Once you have generated the class, we will then integrate it with the rest of the app. Now pause the video and try adding the attribute. Okay, hopefully that challenge wasn't too bad for you. If it was, or if you got stuck, feel free to follow along with me. Okay, so here I have my starter project open and I want to add an attribute to my model. So I'm gonna go down to my resources folder and select my pet pal model. You can see here in our entities, I can select this and you can see we already have our names attribute to it. Hit the plus sign and I'm going to add an address attribute like so. And I'm going to give this a type of string. So now that I've altered my model, I need to regenerate my managed objects. So here you can see are my two managed objects and you can see we have the core data class and the extension here. Now this extension is the one that gets recreated every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and delete it. We're just gonna put this into the trash. Okay, with that done, I'm gonna select my model one more time. And now from the menu, I'm going to choose editor. You can see that this editor is always context sensitive. So I'm gonna choose create NS managed object subclass. You can see our model is selected, so I'm gonna click next. And my friend is selected also. So if this is unchecked, you want to make sure to check that. Now I'm going to choose next and I'm gonna put the location that I'm going to save it. So I'll, I'll place it here and now click create. Now it creates this for me. And you can see here we get our property address just as we added. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. Okay, so let's actually use this now. I'm gonna head over to mainviewcontroller.swift and I'm going to find my add friend IB action. So here it is, and you can see here that we're setting up the data name. This data name is just a randomly generated name. We're also going to set up an address. And we'll simply call it data.address like this. And now we're using our newly generated property. To actually use this in the collection view, I'm gonna scroll down to our collection view where we set everything up. You'll see underneath the name label, we have access to the address label, and we'll set the text from the address just as we added. Now let's build and run. In cases where your app crashes, this may be a case where core data is running into a conflict. The easiest way to solve this is to actually reset the data in the simulator and then just restart the app again. Now I'm gonna add a friend. You can see we have the address as well. If you run this and you didn't reset the simulator, you may notice entries without the address field. That's because when we created these contacts, we saved them without an address. So when we fetch them back, that property is empty. Core data can be a little complex, but don't worry about it. We have you covered. We have plenty of other free core data videos. You can see them right down there. Granted, some of them are written in Swift 2, but think of it as a programming challenge to get them up to date. Give them a shot. Let us know in the comments how you did.